today we are not coming up with many new regulations. We are extending the regulations that exist, that we are using today, but because the lockdown has been extended, we are extending this, those regulations. We will announce a few amendments to those regulations, and that's what we are going to talk about now. In the, new, in, in the amendments, we are stressing the issue of the prohibition of transportation of liquor. The only alcohol that is allowed to be transported is the one that is used for commercial purposes for our sanitizers and the related issues. But liquor that we drink is not allowed to be exported in the same way that it's not allowed to be sold. Before, we were saying that all goods that come from high-risk areas must be sanitized. But this time, because we've been learning about this disease, we've now learned that actually if the goods have been at sea for many days, the virus will not survive. So there is no need at the ports for the goods that have been at sea for a, a long time to be sanitized because the virus would have died. The other issue is that as we get ready for lifting the lockdown in an orderly, incremental manner, we have agreed that we must start decongesting the ports. So items that are already at the ports for export must start being exported. So that as the lockdown is uh, or eased and companies start manufacturing and exporting, they don't find a, co a port that is completely congested with, with goods that are, were there before. You will recall that we've been talking about that, that the children that were separated, where there is co-parenting, but the parents no longer live together. Some of the kids, when the lockdown started, they were in, at one parent's place, and now they need to move to another parent's place. The minister did do uh, directions to that effect, but now we're putting it in the, in the regulations that you have to have either <coughs> a court order or uh, there should be a family advocate's uh, uh, papers, or if you don't have those, you must at least have a birth certificate that shows the connection between you and the children that you are, you are fetching or moving. It is, we are told that if you leave a mine for a long time, an active mine but without activity in it, it poses a danger of rock falls and all those things. Uh, it increases the, ch the chances of seismic activities. So we don't want that to happen and rock falls and collapse of mines. So we've also agreed that the mines must start operating. They'll start operating at 50%. And then the minister, through directions, will ramp them up to full capacity uh, in an orderly way. But there are strict conditions mm -hmm. around how the miners must come back. And those conditions include that there must be screening and testing of the miners uh, that will be coming back to the mines. It's clear that we need to make sure that there are warehouses that are open, that 
supply components for essential services, whether it's water, whether it's electricity, whether it's either essential services and facilities, hospitals, and so on. So those warehouses must be uh, operational to make sure that all those things that need to be repaired, maintained, uh, are done. And also vehicles that are used by people who are in essential, rendering essential services, should they need repairs, emergency repairs, that, that should be opened uh, for them. And so those professionals who do that will have to be now working. But also for homes, private homes, if you have a best pipe or something goes wrong with your electricity, you should be able to call a plumber, a professional plumber or an electrician to come and sort that out. So we're saying that also is now opened up. Also stressing the issue of wholesalers, groceries, spaza shops, uh, informal fruit and vegetable traders, but we are also including those who, in small villages in some of our provinces, uh, do fishing and they sell the fish. So that is also allowed, but not cooked food. Uh, that is not yet uh, opened. We are adding the call centers that are used uh, by uh, retailers, for instance, when some people, when they have accounts at these shops, at Gars, for Shinis, or whatever, they also take insurance that should they lose their jobs or be unable to work and pay their account in the short term, the insurance should uh, kick in. But the insurance can kick in if you don't then call and restructure your, your, your debt or trigger your insurance. So those call centers have become uh, very important and those are now being opened. So those are some of the changes that are in the, the amendments that are in the in the regulations, but other than that, the regulations remain the same. But as I said earlier, because we are going to be opening up or easing the lockdown in an orderly incremental manner, we are going to be probably every week announcing which areas are being open. So don't think that, oh, every time now they are changing. No, it's an orderly way of easing the, the lockdown. We don't know, for now, the lockdown will end on the 30th of April. But even if it ends on the 30th of April, you can't just open the floodgates in one day. There has to be an orderly way.